This student found 1.14 seconds on his first try during his coaching session by changing just a few things in his settings and in his technique. And in just one hour, he was able to improve the equivalent of over a thousand I rating. My name is Suelio Almeida, professional racing coach and creator of the Motor Racing Checklist. More about the course at the end of this video. I've always relied on racing lines. It's so hard for me to get rid of it. Turn them off, it's man. It's not that I've turn it off yeah <laughs> because the thing is that they they prevent you from training your eyes correctly your eyes become addicted see you're you're right now you're looking at the line even if you think you're not you are and you end up missing so many details of the track like camber or so should the I curve. Just turn it off right now um yeah let's try that what i didn't know is that his brake settings were actually wrong Let's you have a load cell try something for me break 50 percent uh, oh yeah now move around between one and 50 percent and i'll do the same from 50 to 100 percent you see you're going past 50 when you when you try to go down mm -hmm. it goes way down it goes to 25 to 20. it's so hard because it's going right below it so now go to that load cell brake pedal and, and check it try that now okay. Whoa, that's already like... Exactly. You had wrong settings in your pedal. If you have a load cell, you have to have it linear and you have to check that box. Okay. That essentially brings the, the force factor or the gamma to zero. So you have absolutely no distortion in the output of your brake pressure based on the input of your pedal. Oh my gosh, so this whole time I've had it wrong. That yeah. is crazy. Okay. Dude, this change and getting used to not using the racing line is game changing for you already. Okay. Let's try that. Oh my gosh, that is so weird not seeing a racing line. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult without the racing line at Silverstone because the corners are so long yeah. that it feels like forever. Yes, it does. So you have to and really I'm... open up your vision to absorb as much information as possible so you have an idea of how deep into the corner you are or like how and much of the honest, corner is left yeah i'll be honest i feel like i would have been two seconds slower easily like already but surprisingly i'm staying under a second so and you're getting some green deltas in some places no more than 75 percent and then really feel the lateral grip that you have mid corner now, look at how he goes straight in between these two corners. This is going to be very important, and we're going to talk about that. Ooh. Yeah, you turned into late this time. Yep. So that might be um, a consequence of... I mean, you, ha you, you depended on the race line before, so of course... Sometimes your, your vision is going to be a little bit lost. But it's funny, ever since I took the racing line off, like, I am a little lost but I'm still looking at other things rather than just seeing a green and red line, you know? And when you get into the 50, 100, 200 laps, that's when you start realizing the tiniest details. Oh, this curve has a tiny bump here. I'm gonna use that as a turning point, or I'm gonna get back on power mid corner when there's this access road or the third red square, you know? Like you start getting so many tiny references that give you so much precision that you would never get with the racing line. See, that's too fast, so you never got a good exit, yeah. you see? Yep. So you have to think ahead for this corner. Like, you break earlier on the second to third corner to uh -huh. open up as much as possible for the last corner and get the best exit possible. The best exit is the goal of this third corner. So you see, Maggots and, and, and Beckets, they are progressively slower. So you go flat, yep. then the second one is a lift, then the third one is like a little bit of breaking. Don't break too hard, next one, only 60%. much quicker if you break too hard you get a micro locking or even locking and you overheat the tire so you mm -hmm. end up not having as much cornering grip so don't break too okay. hard like 75 percent maximum like here feel the grip now you see it turns a lot see how it turns yep 
The rotation is so much better. Yeah, because you're taking care of the surface temperature. And then the car gives you that grip. Try to break almost nothing to the next corner. Like, okay. like what feels to be 1%. There you go. So here it's like a 10% thing, right? Um, initially, you should break a little bit more. You see, you were too fast. So you ended up yep. like trying to use that 1%. That 1% gives you the rotation, but if the car is too fast, you, you lose the car, which is exactly what gotcha. happened. You need a, a, a harder brake initially to control the speed first, and then you use the what feels to be 1% to control the rotation of the car. Now here, if we lift, could we drop it in the fifth? No, just lift. Yeah, see? Okay. Oh, way too early. No, that's no, okay. that's good. That's good. You just you're just breaking too much initially. On the second corner, already like thirty percent is enough. It feels like you're kind of stabbing to over fifty percent on that corner. It's not necessary. Your line was this. You prepared this. You went all the way to here, and then you prepared this entry to get the widest line possible here. My line was getting back on power earlier here and going wide to the left, and then I can't really prepare this corner. And here's the secret. You have to prepare just enough. If you prepare a little bit too much and you have time to go straight here, all this moment you're going straight you're just under the limit that's an over preparation that makes you lose more time here without having any benefit there's just so much you can prepare that will benefit you after that that's over preparing and you're not gaining that time back so what i'm doing is i'm actually going wide because i'm getting back on power earlier i'm gaining time here and then i have time to just go back to your line because i'm not going straight anywhere i'm consistently turning right here i might even not go as much wide as you were going but i'm gaining a lot of time here it's such a tight corner to where it's very hard to carry any type of speed, really. Because the tighter the corner, the more difference it's going to make. So if the corner is already so tight, that's when the tiniest differences in line will, will make a big difference in lap time. If the corner is super wide, not as much. But if it's a very tiny corner, then that is where it makes the most sense because percentage-wise, the speed difference is going to be bigger. Gotcha, but I still can improve a lot based off of the entry of the first corner. You just don't want to over prepare like you want not prepare just enough okay. because if you ever realize that you can take a nap here going straight you're over preparing i'm gonna show you one lap of mine get a little bit of comparison see my initial braking here is like literally 20 percent and then it's like ee, going down very slowly so in a way in the end it's 20 15 10 5 it goes down very slowly but it feels like one percent it still feels like one percent i'm trail braking on a subtle level i'm, ju I'm just lifting here just lifting depends on conditions depends on setup depends on track temperature tire temperature a lot of things but when you were trail braking you were getting way too easy exits so maybe it's a one percent break on cold tires and then it's just lifting fully lifting on the second third lap and then lifting to 20 30 percent and always having a little bit of throttle on the fifth lap and then at the end of the stent you can probably do it flat so right now i'm looking to the sausage here so what I want to do is climb on top of the sausage and like have the widest entry for the first corner. So as soon as I realize that the car is on top of the sausage curb here, now I'm looking here. So now I'm going to turn in fast. Boom. See why fast? Because you're flat. You only turn in slowly if you're trail braking. If you're turning, turning flat on a stiff car like that with high down force, you can just like flick the steering very quickly. So it's a timing thing. And then I'm going to aim for a late apex here. So using the green after the two squares, you see the two squares here? I want to even aim for like this little dirt here, just to get the car the latest apex possible to have the car as much as possible to the right here. See, as much as possible to the right so that I can open up this line and also late apex this one. So here I'm just doing a little bit of 1% braking and coasting to make sure that I'm the most to the left here to set me up for the straight. And then right here, a little bit of braking, preparing, and then power, let it let it run wide. And that's the highest like exit speed that you can possibly do. The whole thing, you can do a reverse engineering from I want the best exit, therefore I need to set up the second corner. Like it can work for you, but you still need hundreds of laps of practice to, to make sure that in your brain, it's all clear. 
because you're gonna realize that the camber is different like you start turning in into this corner here you can see it why because on, on turn in here the track is falling a little bit so there's less grip and then when you turn in here you can see the track very well here but then he, right now after the apex the track starts falling a little bit and then it goes up so there are tiny elevation changes that will make sense for you after you've done hundreds of laps because the grip levels are gonna change ever so slightly see now you turn into this one whoa you can see a lot more why is that because the track has a little tiny compression so you get you will get more grip out of the right hander than out of the left hander not a lot of braking and then back to that one percent yeah the first braking 50 percent is essentially is, is more controlling the speed but i'm already turning so it's already also controlling a little bit of the rotation but i'm turning very lightly on the steering not, not that much and then as i release my brakes doing a little bit of like oversteer corrections and then really adding a little bit more steering right here at the apex and then getting back on power and just letting it run wide a little bit you were doing well the last corner i don't think i have anything to say just not braking too hard because there is a bump under braking here. So you start braking. Ta -ta -ta -ta. There's like a, a little bump that makes you lock. You really don't want to lock up. In iRacing, no lockups. Like locking up means you lose at least two, three tenths on the corner because you overheat the tire. Jared impressed me. Right after my explanations, he went to put together this lap, which was 1.14 seconds faster during the coaching session. Because drivers generally take a while until they let all the information sink in and actually improve their lap times. So it's not normal to improve right away during the session, just a few hours of practice after. And I mean, he had the different pedal settings, he had a racing line turned on, and changing just these two things makes your experience of driving so different that him being able to adapt to it that quick within one hour was amazing. Remember, 1%, it's it's a combination, 1% plus a little bit of steering, that's gonna make the car point very well. Okay. There you go. So, 1% here? Yeah. The 1% is not a fast thing. You can keep the 1% for like half a second, six tenths of a second, seven tenths of a second. So keep okay. that 1% on as an ongo Hold it a ongoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Holy shit. Ah, man, you're fast. Like, you're super fast. I think with this change, turning off the line, fixing the brakes, and getting that feel that, like, 1% is turning the car, that's already over a thousand night rating that you can make. But man, this was so good. Just, like, even changing to a load cell. Like, you know, that was crazy enough because there were certain times where it was like, oh, I felt that brake pressure before and I feel like I'm gonna lock up, but I really haven't. Yeah, I mean, that setting change was a very important thing to do. Also, uh, make sure you watch the course again, because with the new settings, without the racing line, I think a, a bunch of stuff is going to make more sense. Dude, that's perfect, man. Thank you so much. Sim racing is growing more and more, and it's bringing real-life racers and sim racers together. This is making the competition level rise like I've never seen it before. So if you want to become that competitive, the secret is in the driving technique more than equipment. My professional driving technique course, the motor racing check list already has over 3,000 drivers including real life drivers and professional esport drivers just so you know how good it is. I made this course after coaching over 2,000 drivers in one-to-one -one live sessions and it contains all the advanced concepts, techniques and exercises that I've developed with my students over all these years of coaching. It's perfect for any simulator, racing games and also for real life drivers wanting to use the simulator to improve their real life driving technique. This course is about car handling skills and the goal is to make you find better lap times and consistency. You will learn how to prevent and induce specific behaviors and learn how to 
feel them earlier so you can predict what's happening with the car with professional precision. By the way, this course has a money back guarantee with no questions asked. So if you don't improve, you get your money back and you can join my Discord to read reviews and ask any questions. Join the course now and I will see you on track.